Tom here from Learn Systems, and we're going to talk about OpenVPN and PFSense. I've done videos on this before, but I want to do a 2020 edition of this particular video and talk about all the details because eh, a few options have changed since the last couple of years since I did a video. If you want to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button up at the top. If you want to support the channel in other ways, there are some affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services that we talk about on this channel. Now, I want to start out with our lab setup. So this is the first part of this where we have to kind of describe where everything is to get you an idea. I have a Windows 10 running in VirtualBox locally on my computer here. VirtualBox has its own NAT firewall. And I did this on purpose so I could show you that OpenVPN working through NAT, because that's generally why you use OpenVPN and where you'll be using it, whether you want to connect from home to your office or from one office to another office or whenever you're out and about, you want to use OpenVPN to connect to get to resources on the other side of the network or just tunnel all your traffic. So this is NATed. This is the VirtualBox NAT. This is our pseudo internet, if you will. So 192.168.3.24 network. And that attaches to the WAN side of a PFSense in my lab here. So it's got a WAN address of 192.168.3.195. And then we're going to focus on the fact that it has a 192.168.40 address. Yes, it has a 10 address. We're going to briefly mention it. I just pointed, pointed out it exists, but we're trying to get to the goal when we have this configured is to get to this 40 network that is behind this particular firewall. So 192.168.40.1 is the gateway. So it's 40 slash 24. And we have this server running Debian on it at 192.168.40.119. So the goal is to get from this network to this network using OpenVPN. So we're going to walk you through how the wizard works. And that's the easiest way to get started with OpenVPN. I've already got some other advanced videos and you're going to do some really tricky things with it. But we'll start with the basics here to get you started and walk through what these steps mean. So go over here to VPN, open VPN. And this is where you're going to run the wizard. Now, I guess I should probably back up real quick here and go over to the package manager because this will make your life a lot easier. The open VPN client export utility. It's a free plugin. I've already got it loaded. You just go into available packages, look for open VPN client export. It'll save you a lot of trouble, you'll see after we run the wizard. So the wizard will configure everything for you in terms of OpenVPN. The client export is really helpful in making it simple when you want to export all the settings and import them in the window. So right now the client export's loaded, but there's nothing in here because there's no VPNs configured. And the way it works is you'll have a list of servers here. You can configure more than one OpenVPN server inside of PFSense. And there's special use cases that you want to do for that. I've already got another video on how to use Radius. LDAP is another option. If you have other authentication methods, they are available. But for the basics, we're just going to cover local user access. Now, if it didn't have a certificate authority, the wizard lets you create one. Uh, pretty simple. You'll just fill out the information of your made up self-signed certificate authority. We're just going to click next as I have one. I already have a certificate called LTS VPN. Pretty straightforward there. So we'll go ahead and choose that. WAN, protocol, UDP, multi-home, or just TCP, IDP4. I'm going to say the best way to do this is going to be TCP, IPv4, but it's up to you. You can leave it at default and it'll work perfectly fine uh, and have both enabled. But uh, some people have asked me, and I don't have a lot of knowledge in IPv6 myself, um, it does have support for it, but I know there's limitations to it. So don't ask me anything about IPv6 support. Now, if you have the hardware acceleration, turn that on. I don't in this particular lab environment, but all these other defaults are pretty much fine here. So we're going to go down here. Tunnel network. This is important. Make sure this tunnel network does not conflict with any other network. It's defaulting to 192.168.70.0/24, and the tunnel network is basically the bridging methodology in between. So even though you see on this here, going from this network through right here and getting to here, the tunnel network is essentially an intermediary that is going to be created in here. So we can technically add it to this. And we called it ton 192.168.70.1 slash 24. And what these are is kind of a virtual network that is the broker to get the data across. And as long as it doesn't conflict with any of your other networks, you're fine. If it does, change it. It's kind of arbitrary that it's set to 70. Now this part here, redirect gateway. This one can be a bit of a challenge because this is a big design decision. So we have the local networks down here that we want to push through. As in we want to say, hey, you have access to these networks and it pushes the routing information for 192.168.40.0 slash 24 and 
10.1.10.0/24. But forcing all generated traffic through the tunnel, let me give you a better idea of that. So this is going to come through here, come across here, go in here, and have access to this resource. But how does it get back out to the internet? Well, right now it's going to go from here through the VBox NAT, and away we go this way out to the net internet. And when you redirect the gateway, that works differently. So if you redirect the gateway, that means we're going to take, and that computer actually goes out of here. So it's going to come in here and come back out and go out the internet this way. This is redirected gateway to give you an idea. So if you want to use this, that's great, except the problem you run into. Now, this is an excellent scenario for when you're out of the office and you want to tunnel all your network back through your office network because you want to make sure that everything you do is encrypted within that tunnel. That works great. But if you have a business and you have a lot of remote users and you want all of their traffic tunneled through the network, now that means all of their traffic. That means if they have YouTube open, Netflix open, anything that that particular computer has VPN in, it's now redirecting all the traffic there. And this can apply as well if you're doing a site-to-site -site VPN with OpenVPN. Do you want all that site's traffic to completely tunnel through and over? This sometimes creates bandwidth problems, restrictions, because you can only have so much resources to dedicate to OpenVPN. Now, if you have a really fast server and a lot of bandwidth, that's not a big deal, but this is a big design consideration, like I said, as you want to make sure you have the ability to handle the bandwidth. One user, not a big deal. 10 users, 20 users, 30 users later, and all of them have different things open and are not just trying to access this one lonely server down here. They're tunneling all their traffic through and then back out here. So through and back out, and it can take a lot of resources to run that. So decide whether or not you want to redirect the gateway. Push whatever networks that you want to have access to. And this is, you know, advantage when you set up multiple VPNs. You can say, maybe I only want to push certain networks over this. Um, you can set up multiple servers inside of PFSense on different ports. This, uh, because I've actually set this up a few times, this defaulted to port 1195, but you can actually choose any really uh, high level port you want for OpenVPN. It doesn't have to be on 1194 or 1195. Whichever port you choose, just make sure you have the uh, matching firewall rules for it. Concurrent connections, specify the maximum number of clients connected to the server, something if you want to put some restrictions on there. Omit the preference for compression. Set the TOS IP header of tunnel packets uh, value. Don't, never really need to set that. Maybe there's some special circumstances where you do. I'm not going to dive into that. Inner client communication, allow communication between clients on the server. As I said, this 192.168.70.0 network uh, will be where each one of these IP addresses gets assigned. That being said, do you want them to be able to intercommunicate with each other? Probably not. Duplicate connections. Allow multiple concurrent connections from clients with the same common name. Note, this is not generally recommended, but may be needed for some scenarios. You run into a problem occasionally if someone drops and tries to connect right away. You may see that uh, be a problem if, because maybe they dropped and didn't have enough time for it to drop them from the firewall so they'll not be able to connect. So there are scenarios sometimes where you want to have this on there uh, where you allow duplicate connections. It's only temporary because the other one will drop off over time, uh, but maybe you want it or maybe they have more than one computer. The downside of doing it that way if they have more than one computer logging in is you don't know which one's which. Uh, so you can have some confusion. So I recommend creating different users if they have multiple uh, computers they want logged in, but you know, do that as you will. You can leave all this at default dynamic IP, allow connected retainer client connections if the IP changes. Subnet, one IP address per client per subnet, that's fine at default. This is where you can push if you had specific DNS servers that you wanted to force across the network. So it allows you to specify them. Maybe you have internal DNS servers that you want to specify, but it gives you some options here if you want to force certain ones over the network because uh, you want them to have resolution over local resources that they're going to be accessing. And leave all these other things at default all the way through on the bottom right here. They're kind of special use cases. Add the firewall rule. Yes. And add the OpenVPN rule. Yes. Go ahead and do those things on there. Uh, let it do that. You can always change them later, but the defaults are just basically wide open rules to allow uh, the OpenVPN to connect and work. So we're going to go ahead and hit finish. Now let's go back in and do some fine tuning if you want. This is optional. So the default out of the box, this will work. 
and we have a TLS key for TLS authentication. I dive deeper into hardening uh, OpenVPN. I've got a lot of OpenVPN videos on some of these other special use cases or special hardening. Um, you may or may not want to have multiple cipher options. You can disable this if you want. This expands more ciphers. This shouldn't be a problem at all because someone will see SHA-160 and go, hey, isn't SHA-1 broken? Uh, this is part of the HMAC authentication encapsulations, so don't really worry about that. Client certificate depth. So do you want each client to have their own client server certificate depth? And what this means is, and all the way over here, this is checking the certificate on a per client basis as well as all the other settings in here. And this is an extra layer of security, but if you are looking for simplicity and you don't want to deal with any certificates per user, you can set it just down this. We're going to leave it at default, but um, I'll, I'll show you at the to client export what that means. So all these can be left at default as well. I did another video on fine tuning the VPNs as well, like I said, for performance, and you can tweak some of these and try them. But the best thing to do right here is just try it when you have the default set up. So we didn't change any settings. Now here's where the client export will help you a lot. We only have one VPN. So test VPN, TCP port 95. This is that multiple client certificate. So we have an admin and a Tom. We got two users on this. The reason you have to get a specific export is because there's a different bundled certificate with each one of these. Um, that's that extra feature. And I'll just show you if we turn it off. We go here. And let's say we're only going to be user auth. We'll go ahead and hit save. Client export. Now it doesn't matter. We're only going to do no per client certificates. That means the configuration stays the same, but there's not a certificate for every user. Like I said, this comes down to different methodologies. Maybe you want just a standard installer that you can just change the usernames um, and add them as needed the, and not have to deal with certificates, especially if you're using another device to authenticate those certificates. So that's an optional one on there. It still requires, and we're going to dive into this now by first testing this in Linux. So we'll download this file and we'll show you what's inside of it. So we'll go over here. And it still has a certificate. It just doesn't have the per user. So here's that TLS key down at the bottom. Here's the certificate needed. So all these parameters are needed in order to get in there. There's our remote client. Here's the uh, resolve retry infinite and the NCP cipher options plus the cipher option right here. So here's all the little details regarding all the settings that are in this particular file. Now, we're going to get into Windows, but first let's show you how it works on Linux. And the reason I'm doing this is because it's kind of easier to do because Linux has OpenVPN built in, but we'll get to the Windows installer next. So obviously I can't ping 192.168.40, oops, 119. And if you remember from our map here, 40.119 is this server because it's behind there. And right now I'm on my computer, which happens to be 192.168.3.9. Don't worry, we're going to get to the Windows one next. So what we're going to do is from the command line here, I have other videos on how to set this up to be through the actual UI, but we're just going to do it from the command line because this is an easy way to test it. Open VPN. You have sense lab. Now you have to run sudo because you need to run OpenVPN as a privileged user. This is true both in Windows and Linux. So login is my privileged user, then username, password, and away we go. And see if it connects. Absolutely, it connects. And we can go down here and ping. Actually, first let's disconnect it. So we'll ping that right now and just show you it doesn't work. Uh, 40.119, can't ping it. If we do route, the only routes I have are this 192.168.3 network. Go just up arrow and sudo OpenVPN, that same one again, log in. All right, now we've done it. And the first thing I want to do before I even ping this, because we already seen two transmitted, none working, so we're going to put route again. And here was the route. I only have this one network. Now I have all these networks. Here's that intermediary network, 192.168.70. Then we have 192.168.40. Then it says the 40 network has a gateway of the 70.1. So if we want something on the 40 network, go out 70.1. You notice those didn't exist in the route. This is a very important piece to make sure that this route is here. So now we can ping and I can get to that Debian server, no problem. 
Actually, I don't think I have SSH turned on in a particular box at the moment, but we can ping it. But the point is we can get to this network and that's what we're, that's what the goal was here. So we're able to get to the network. I'm able to ping it. It's working. Next. Now let's do this inside a window. So we're going to go ahead and cancel this and get rid of it. So uh, don't really need to do anything else. We're just going to go RM. So I deleted the file. It's gone. And we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it with Windows. So we go down here, current Windows installer. No problem. Now this is great. This installer here has everything we need inside of it. So show folder. Open VPN lab TCP Windows 7 install. Now it says Windows 7, but if you notice here, it's a it supports Windows 7, 8, 8.1, 2012 R2, and also Windows 10. So all of them are supported. Actually, I need this installer. I grabbed the wrong one. This is the one that's the 781, and this is the Windows 10 installer right next to it. I actually did download the wrong one. There we go. Nothing like doing it all live, right? Here's our Windows 10 installer I was looking for. So we'll go ahead and delete this one. Here's our Windows 10 installer. And if I move it over to this folder, I can copy it onto right there. And then we're going to go back over to our Windows machine and run that wizard. Here's this Windows machine, 10.20.2.15. We're going to do a route print. So you can see here's the local routes that it has, the 10 dot network, and that's really it. It can't go anywhere else. Now it can get on the internet, it is online, but we are certainly not going to be able to ping because there's no route to this. Ping 192.168.40, whoops, 40.119. Nine, there we go. Can't ping anything. All right. Go over here. Get this OpenVPN installer copied over. And we'll go ahead and run the installer. Windows does its security scan. There we go. Yes. Minimize this. You can just next and yes, all the default options work perfectly fine for this. All right, so OpenVPN is loaded, and let's go ahead and open it up. So from here, now we have a little icon down here, and we're going to go ahead and connect. Before we do that, we'll just pull this route back up again, print, so you can see all the routes. You can see there's no 192.168.40 network to route 2, so if we try to ping anything, it's just not going to work. So ping 192.168.40.19. Can't get to it because the route doesn't exist. We're going to go ahead and connect. Username, put in a password. And it looks like it's connecting. There we go. PFSense connected. All right. We'll do a route print now. And there's those extra networks. There's that 40 network. There's the 10 network. It's saying that a gateway is going to be that tunnel network, 192.168.70. So if you want to get to any resources on there, that's the gateway to use on this tunnel network. Matter of fact, if you were to uh, IP config with Windows, it now has two different network connections. Here's the 70 network, and here's this particular network here. So let's go back over. Route print, that works, and now we should be able to ping. So ping, and away we go. We're able to get to that server and get to the resources on that side of the network. So that's pretty much it for getting it set up in Windows or in Linux and being able to get to the resources on a network of OpenVPN. It's pretty straightforward to do. Now, troubleshooting is another topic. One, read the error messages. This is the Biggest thing I see that people don't do, and it's so many people that can go through and solve the problem by a quick Google search. Uh, if you go here, and we're going to go to the, if you've seen, we went to system, system logs, you go over here to OpenVPN, it details out all the steps, everything that's happening for the users connecting. This is really easy, and a lot of times you can go through and literally Google by right click in Google search. You wouldn't believe how many times you just find the answer. You'll It'll say error because this happened, error because of that happened, failed this, failed that. And those are 
really quick ways you can start doing it, especially if you're trying to fine tune and tweak things and you've changed a bunch of settings and you're not really familiar with OpenVPN, uh, you'll lead to breaking it. Also, feel free to delete everything and run the wizard. Sometimes starting it back over is a good way to start and start from a base known working. Also, once you get it working, before you do the tuning, do a backup restore. If you grab the backup file before, once you know it's working, before you start tuning it, you can then easily roll back to the known working state. And a lot of times I'll download a backup called known working good. That way, worst case scenario, I can always just restore back to the known working good state of the system. Now, another note here, when you go here to OpenVPN, you can go here. So you, I went OpenVPN and I go this, and this will show you the users connected. So I got user Tom. Now, because I'm running VirtualBox on my computer, 192.168.3.9 is my computer, and this Windows computer, has this 10 address behind here, it shows my computer's IP address, just a FYI. It shows the public IP of whatever that user is connecting from. So even if they're three NATs deep behind something else, you'll actually see their public IP right here from where they're coming in at. Then the virtual address that they're assigned, this is that 70.1 is the gateway for the tunnel network inside of PFSense. 70.2 has been assigned to user Tom when they connected and what kind of data they're sending right here. Uh, you can also add over here at PFSense, Go to the dashboard and you can click add this open vpn right here well let me add it twice i don't think nope doesn't look like it oh yeah i will neat <laughs> i never tried adding it twice so if you wanted to put this in more than one spot on the dashboard you can i'm kind of fine with one spot uh but this will list out all the users especially if you're dealing with a lot of vpn traffic you can kind of narrow it down and and make some determinations of how many users are logged in and go from there once again, kind of goes to the fine tuning. So hopefully this helps get you started with OpenVPN. There's lots of advanced videos I have on how to use different authentication like free radius for this. Even loading a free radius server within PFSense is the video demo I have on that. Um, fine tuning and what the different settings mean as far as the uh, cryptographic settings and some of the performance tuning that goes with it. Uh, there's a lot of settings you can tweak because the wizard only exposes so many, but obviously once it's all configured and set up, everything's exposed, including if there's anything that they didn't have inside of here, custom options are in there as well. So if you have some custom configuration things you want to do with OpenVPN, you can actually push different settings right here as well. In addition to, for example, it's going to be pushing routes. And I'll do another video on that at a later time. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.